Welcome, grade 12s. You know that rates of reaction increase when temperature increases. Now, we are going to see what happens to chemical equilibriums at different temperatures. When we deal with temperature in chemical reactions, the first things that usually come to mind are exothermic and endothermic reactions. We thought it would be interesting for a sports physiotherapist to tell us about the importance of exothermic and endothermic reactions in dealing with sports injuries. When dealing with a sports injury, we either apply a hot or a cold pack, depending on the type of injury. This helps reduce swelling in muscle and joint sprains, and also in some situations, also helps reduce pain. The pack is made up of a large pouch containing a dry chemical, and inside a smaller pouch, which contains water. I'll be demonstrating with a cold pack. To activate the pack, you need to break the seal between the two substances, and then shake the pack vigorously. By doing this, you're mixing the dry chemical with the water, and in turn creating either an endothermic or exothermic reaction. As previously explained, there are two compartments to hot and cold packs. The inside, which is the liquid reactant or the water, and the outside, which is a chemical ingredient. To mix the two together, you'll be causing both of these substances to react. If the pack heats up, it will be an exothermic reaction. And in other packs, depending on the chemical inside, the pack might go through what is called an endothermic reaction, which causes the pack to turn cold. These days, physiotherapists can use and reuse hot and cold packs. The reusable hot packs have a metal trigger in them. Once this trigger has been clicked, the pack then will heat up. But of course, over time, the pack cools down again, causing the chemicals to turn into hard crystals. We can reverse this by heating up the pack again for a few minutes in boiling water. I hope you found this interesting as you learn about the effects of temperature on chemical equilibrium. I'm sure you can see now why exothermic and endothermic reactions are so important. Do you remember what an exothermic reaction is? It is a reaction where the products give off more heat energy than the reactants take in. This means a hot pack uses an exothermic reaction to heat it up. Let's recap. An endothermic reaction is a reaction where the reactants take in more heat energy than the products give off. The physiotherapist showed us a reusable hot pack. Did you notice that when the trigger was clicked, the pack released heat? This is an exothermic reaction. To reverse the reaction and get the hot pack back to its original state, it had to be heated in boiling water. Heat was added, telling us this was an endothermic reaction. What can you conclude about a forward and reverse reaction from this information? If the forward reaction is exothermic, then the reverse reaction will be endothermic. Let's take a look at the Haber process again, this time focusing on temperature. Notice that the Haber process has a change in heat of less than zero. This means it is a negative. For the change in heat to be a negative, it means that the heat given off was greater than the heat taken in. Therefore, the forward reaction of the Haber process is exothermic. And because it is exothermic, we can consider heat as a product. So, if the forward reaction is exothermic, then the reverse reaction must be endothermic. That means that the reverse reaction will take in more heat than is produced. The reverse reaction uses heat like a reactant. Here we see the forward reaction which is exothermic. Heat is produced or given off by the products. The reverse reaction is endothermic, which means heat is used or taken in by the reactants. We can now look at how a change in temperature affects a chemical equilibrium. Bear in mind again, Le Chatelier's principle says, when a chemical equilibrium in a closed system is disturbed, 
the system will work to relieve the cause of the disturbance until chemical equilibrium is re-established. Let's now join Kanye and Rahim as they observe changes to the equilibrium of a cobalt chloride reaction. Right, we're going to use the cobalt chloride experiment again to see the effects of a change in temperature, am I right? Yes, I've already written the equation on the board and the equation has reached equilibrium at room temperature. I see that the change in heat is less than zero. What does this mean again? It means that more heat was given off than taken in, so the forward reaction was exothermic. So, what do I do with the beakers? Well, we're going to use the beakers to change the temperature of the cobalt chloride equilibrium. So this one has hot water in it, and this one has ice water in it. Okay, can I put the test tube in the hot water? Yes, but just be careful, use the tongs. <laughs> Wow, it's changed to blue. Now put it in the ice water beaker. Okay. That's so cool. It's turned pink. But why does it change color? It has to do with which reaction is endothermic and which is exothermic. If we look at the equation again, we can work out what color it will change to at different temperatures. OK, but we found that the forward reaction is exothermic. And we can add heat as a product because heat is given off. OK, so according to Le Chatelier's principle, if we decrease the temperature of a system, the position of the equilibrium will shift in such a way as to undo the change applied to it. So the reaction that makes more heat will be favored. So which reaction makes more heat? An exothermic reaction makes heat. So I think the forward reaction will be favored. And if the forward reaction is favored, then more products will be produced and the reaction will turn pink. So for the color to change to blue, we want the reverse reaction to be favored. The reverse reaction is endothermic, which means it takes in heat. This means we must add heat. So that's why the color is blue in the hot water. Great, let's change the colors again. That was interesting. Let's summarize what we learned with Kanye and Rahim. If the temperature is increased, the endothermic reaction is favored. This is to take in the excess heat. If the temperature is decreased, the exothermic reaction is favored. This is to add more heat. A little tip to help you remember this is to notice the ends in increase and endothermic. They go together. In a previous lesson, we learned about the equilibrium constant and calculating the Kc. Do you remember the formula to work out the Kc? Kc equals the product of the concentrations of the products divided by the product of the concentrations of the reactants at equilibrium. If the Kc is bigger than 1, then the concentration of the product is more than the concentration of the reactants. If the Kc is equal to 1, then the concentration of the products is equal to the concentration of the reactants. If the Kc is smaller than 1, then the concentration of the product is less than the concentration of the reactants. Remember that the only change to an equilibrium that will result in a change in the Kc value is a change in temperature. Let's look at this reaction. A reacts with B to produce C and D, with change in heat as minus 94 kilojoules per mole. The forward reaction is exothermic, and the reverse reaction is endothermic. So, if we increase the temperature, the endothermic reaction is favored. 
This is the reverse reaction, and more A and B will be produced. A and B are reactants, so the concentration of reactants increases, and the concentration of the products decreases. Let's look at an example. Our products decrease from 2 to 1, and our reactants increase from 1 to 2. A half is smaller than 2. Therefore, the overall Kc value will decrease. Can you explain what will happen to the Kc if we decrease the temperature? Well, if we decrease the temperature, the exothermic reaction will be favored. This is the forward reaction in our reaction. This produces more products. Therefore, concentration of products decreases and concentration of reactants increases the products. Here we see the products increase from 1 to 2 and the reactants decrease from 2 to 1. 2 is bigger than a half, so the overall Kc value will increase. Let's review what we have learned. If the forward reaction is exothermic and the temperature is increased, then the reverse reaction is favored. This means the concentration of products decreases and the Kc decreases. If the forward reaction is still exothermic and the temperature is decreased, then the forward reaction is favored. So the concentration of the products increases and the Kc increases. The opposite is true if the forward reaction is endothermic. Once again, have a look at the rates and chemical equilibrium task video. And you may also find some useful additional information on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.